Welcome back to another Torch review. Today I have the U-Torch 01 in for testing. This is the 1A variant, which is 6,500 Kelvins. There is a warmer one available too at 5,000 Kelvins. Now this was supplied by Gearbest, but as I usually do, I look at the stronger and weaker points of the torch to let you make your own mind up what you prefer. Uh, I have all the items laid out here that you get included. And we move on to the user manual. It's fairly well laid out, fairly big diagram on the torch and we go through the settings here they've done another diagram for that you have instant access to the last settings so you have a memory and you have three strobe modes as well as four power levels that are available so this works off of single clicks or a longer press or a double press for the strobe modes now i'll zoom in a bit closer for the run times because it will vary depending on the cell this torch takes 8a or the uh, 14500 lithium ion cells so you get a difference in run times and power output on those. The lithium will give you a higher output rating at the top end and also at the bottom end. Now onto the user manual. This runs through some of the specs. We have a type 3 type body. We have a water resistance at IPX8 as well and impact resistance. And here we have a list of the compatible types of battery that you can use. Personally, I think most people will be using the AAs, but it's also worth looking at the lithiums too if you need the extra power output. You also get an included wrist strap. This has an adjuster on it as well, so you can uh, attach it to the strap and close it down a bit. And you get a spare O-ring. Now the clip is uh, fairly decent, quite a nice small size, and you can, if you move this onto the torch, you have two positions that you can pick. You can put it in the middle, we can also put it near the end cap and turn it around too. Now, whether or not you want to use it, it's included. So sometimes I do on some torches and other times not. Looking at the body, quite like the design on this, quite a lot of uh, cross hatched areas. So it gives you a bit of grip. You'll see this at the bottom with the model number. It's not a button. Um, it's just the maker's model that's stamped on there. Perhaps that's something they could look at for future models, a two button design. But for this particular one, it wouldn't be something that bothers me. Moving in a bit closer to look at the LED, you will notice that the reflector has a dimpled effect, sort of orange peel style, so that should help to throw the light around a bit more. Later on we're going to run some tests comparing this with lithium and AA cells. Unscrewing the base, you have a spring on that section. Nice to see that they've actually greased the threads on this as well. I have the lithium cell fitted to this one. And it's also possible to unscrew the top section too. You can see there's just a contact point there. So just the one spring on the bottom section. There is one area that I did note and it is worth taking um, note of this and that is the size of the batteries. Now the lithium cell that I have here is pretty much the same size as the any loop, which is around about five centimeters. And there isn't a whole lot of extra space with the design on the torch. So if you have a protected lithium cell, you will probably find that it won't fit. Now this one fits just fine because there's really no difference in size compared to the standard nickel metal hydride. So I screw that up. There is a bit of play in the spring, but if you look at a battery and it's about 5.3 uh, centimeters, you'll find that it's going to be a bit too long. So this one here, you can see about the five centimeter mark. So that's something they could have looked at, possibly made the main uh, tube area in the middle a touch longer. Now the operation, it's a single press takes you through to the moonlight mode initially and if you longer press it will take you back to the mode that you're in last, the power output. And you can cycle through the power settings just with another press. User interface works pretty well on this. Um, you don't have a lockout, that's the only thing that I would say. If you have a long press, as I've done here, you see that the turbo mode has come on the highest level because I set that last, and double press takes you to the strobe modes, and you can cycle through those three modes with a single press. It works pretty well, um, but like I said, I would have maybe gone for the lockout, although I haven't really had too many problems carrying this in the pocket. You do need to give it a fairly decent press to activate the torch. Moonlight mode is rated down to around about 2 lumens, so it's fairly low, and we'll go on to that test now where you can have a look. This is with the nickel metal hydride, so around about 2 lumens. Um, 
I'd say it's possibly slightly more, but that's slow enough for me for the output level. And you go up to the lithium ion, it's up to about 10. So there's quite a difference. That's one trade-off that you have with a lithium cell is the lower output is higher than the nickel metal hydride. This shows you the beam shot inside. You see fairly evenly distributed beam um, with a hot spot in the middle, but it's quite nicely diffused, so it's not obviously outlined. You know, this is my water resistance test. You can see I've left it in here. Leave it for around 20 minutes and the torch is still operating fine underwater, so there's no problems in that area. First test that's up is the nickel metal hydride. So what I do for this is I'm just going to cycle through the power levels and then you'll be able to see how far the torch reaches and the beam spread. This is around about 100 foot, so a fair distance away and we're at the sort of limit possibly of the range. You can get a bit further out of this torch going up to the higher power levels. It actually did pretty well for a single cell AA nickel metal hydride. That's not a bad output. It's certainly a lot higher than the traditional older mag lights. And now onto the lithium ion. Cycling up through the power levels. And then finally going up to the higher settings. You should see there is a bit more power with the lithium. And that's to be expected. It is putting out um, a higher voltage. So you're going to get more intensity out of the beam. And I've done quite a few other tests just to show you the exact difference that you get between using the two cell types. We're back on nickel metal hydride. This is the standard test that I do with all the torches. This is around about sort of 40, 45 feet. Wide angle in the garden. and stepping up the power levels. Pretty good, I'm actually quite impressed with the power output on this for a single cell. And then we go on to the lithium ion. You should be able to see that the lower modes are a bit brighter in intensity than the nickel metal hydride. And then stepping up to the top level. You should notice the difference more at the highest setting. You can see here it's got more range and the beam spread is widening out a bit more as well. For this test, I'm comparing the U torch to an Olight S1R baton, and I'm onto the Olight now. You should be able to see the difference in output. The Olight puts out 900 lumens in the top mode, albeit for a short period of time. I'm going back to the U torch. There isn't a massive difference though in power. You will notice that both torches do get uh, quite a bit of heat into the body. We're back onto the Olight there. Now for this test we're on nickel metal hydride. This is another wider angle test, a bit closer this time to the shed you can see at the bottom of the garden. Distance on this would be about 35 feet. And then up to the top setting onto the lithium ion. and then ramping up the power levels. And then the top setting, a bit more obvious, the power output from the lithium cell at the top setting here. You can see there's more intensity on the shed and on the basketball board. Now the SOS modes, we have the beacon, which strobes every couple of seconds, and then the standard SOS mode, the three flashes, followed by three slower flashes. And you also get a faster strobe mode too. So that's quite well covered. Some torches just have the one strobe mode. It's not a big thing for me, but it's nice to have a choice. Now, this is the longer range test. I'm starting with nickel metal hydride. It does an okay job of lighting up the tree. That's about 40, 45 feet away. But once I switch over to the lithium cell, as you can see now, you see there's a bit more power there and the intensity has increased. Just get that extra bit of range off of the LED. This is close range with the nickel metal hydride, just to look at the beam pattern. It's a quite nicely spread out beam, quite a wide um, spread on the angle here but you do have a bit of intensity in the middle but that intensity shows up more obviously when you have the lithium ion cell and you crank it up to the full setting here you can see there's a bit more a bit more punch in the middle section which could be useful if you need to illuminate further away objects 
and I'll do another telephoto shot which will show you the difference between the two perhaps more obviously than the other ones the nicometal hydride here you can see I can see the bush at the background there but it certainly lights up a bit more with the lithium ion cell you can see more detail in the shadows so which cell you prefer to use is really going to come down to you. I think the AA for convenience, but if you have a couple of lithium cells around, I'd certainly look at um, perhaps picking one or two up. Just make sure you get the unprotected ones. Now GearBest have provided a code below. You can use that if the torch isn't on sale. This code will give you around about 12% off of the purchase price so if you're interested in that you can use the code there on to my own summary and conclusion with the ut01 uh, overall i do like the torch there's a couple of points that i would say i would have changed um, i would have preferred slightly longer body so you could use a protected uh, 14500 lithium cells it's just a touch on the short side for those and there's no lockout mode on the main button i perhaps would have added one with a long press on the side switch the good side is the price. This is a very good price for the torch that you get. It doesn't feel compromised in terms of the quality or the output. It certainly feels nice in the hand. You have a choice of two power sources. You have three strobe modes and it's got a pretty nice beam output too. I have to say, quite impressed with this considering the price point and the size for a compact pocket torch. If you don't necessarily want a lithium one, then an AA one is still a good option, I think, and possibly a bit overlooked by most of the makers, then I certainly give this a recommendation for someone looking for a torch of this type.